Copy number variations, or CNVs, are alterations that result in a cell having an abnormal number of copies of one or more sections of DNA. In this video, we'll be importing four E. coli genomes that were assembled using SeqMan Engine. We want to analyze the differences in copy number variation between three mutant genomes and the wild type genome. From the Erase Our Welcome screen, we'll start out by clicking on Start CNV Project. Files can be imported by using these buttons or by dragging and dropping the files onto the wizard, as I'll do here. We'll click Next to go to the Setup Preprocessing screen. There are two different normalization methods for the CNV workflow, RPKCN and ZRPKM. These are discussed in detail in the Erastar Help. Since we have a small number of samples, the default of RPKCN is the best choice for us. Note that the template sequence in the center part of this screen has been input automatically for us. It was stored in the assembly packages. We'll click Next to move to the preprocessing screen. In the experiment list view, we can see the four files that we just added. I'll reorganize these to put the wild type sample first. Next, we'll click on the Gene Table tab and use the Add Expression Level column tool to add the total raw counts for each of our samples. The genes we're interested in for this project are the THR, A, B, and C genes, and I'll highlight these with my mouse. By glancing at these, we can see that Mutant 1 doesn't contain any copies of these genes. Mutant 2 contains approximately twice as many copies as in the wild type, while Mutant 3 contains about five times as many copies as in the wild type. Later in this video, I'll show you a trick for making these multiples much more obvious. For now, we'll right-click on the selection and choose Select in All Views. We can look at the CNV comparison graphically using Graphs Heat Map. The heat map shows copy number variation levels on a scale from light gray, meaning zero, to blue, meaning low copy number, all the way through red, which signifies the highest copy number. We can see here that the wild type is blue, and the two mutants that have extra copies of these genes are shown in various shades of yellow, orange, and red. Now we'll return to the gene table. Next, I'll show you the trick for making the copy number variation really pop out. To do this, we're going to use the data, edit data transformations command. We'll click the add button to add a new transformation and we're going to use create ratios against baseline as the type. We're going to leave this at the default. We want to compare everything to the wild type as the baseline. And now we'll click OK. The Raystar is going to prompt us to confirm that we want to do this because it's going to delete the columns we just added to the gene table. So we can go ahead and click transform and you can see the columns have disappeared. So now we're going to add our expression level columns again using the same tool, but this time we'll choose Advanced. That's because I want to change this to the linear scale. We click OK. There we can see the copy number variation really pops out. The wild type has one copy of the three genes of interest. Mutant 1 has no copies, Mutant 2 has two copies, and Mutant 3 has five copies. For more information about the copy number variation workflow in ArrayStar, or for information about any of our other applications, please visit our website at www.dnastar.com or contact us at support at dnastar.com.